I killed 52 people. That's unusual for someone to personally kill 52 people. There's a reason why. What is that? When I was there, they changed the way they set up the ambushes. So typically the ambush should be set up on a trail. Everyone would have a claymore out and they'd all have a generator to fire the amb- their claymore. And so the you know, lieutenant would fire the first one and everyone else would fire theirs. What they found out was a lot of people never fired the claymores. So they changed it and they had all the wires come back to a battery. And the battery was where I was. So I initiated all the ambushes after that. And that's why the kill number was so high for me. Okay. Because so I would I would set off 10 claymores with one action. And there's 750 balls in each one. So 7,500 ball bearings go down range. Your chances of surviving that are pretty low. Wow. And I mean, this is a very definite number. Is this related to the, you know, the body count policy in Vietnam? I mean, you know that number because afterwards you would count because your higher ups wanted to know the number to yep. satisfy the body count policy. Yep. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy things happened with that. I mean, I blew the biggest platoon size ambush up to that time, uh, killed 13 uh, coming down a trail. It was an ambush that I, I was very good at setting up ambushes, the, the strategy of the ambush. But this ambush was set up. They put it, they sent us out. They must have had some intel. They sent us out to a place that was beyond artillery 105s. Uh, so we, we didn't have artillery, real close artillery support. It was a trail that went, uh, it was a, a ridge of the trail, and then it went down to a river. Okay, and that's where they crossed the river. And so we set up the ambush, and you had to be very, very close because was on top of the ridge and so it fell off on either side so basically some of the guys are only three foot from the trail okay because you're down below yeah. so i set up this ambush with all the the claymores and the point man comes through we let him go through he goes down to the river the main body comes in they stopped because it's the top of the ridge and we just blew him away you know, i think maybe one or two might have survived and we went out and shot him these were NVA or VC? The, actually, after we, no, they were NVA. Um, but it turns out they were guys in stretchers that were being brought back to the rear. You know, you can't tell at nighttime, right? But basically, it was the Red Cross. So, it was the NVA Red Cross, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. I don't know what they called it, but so the a colonel flew out the next day. He wanted to count the bodies himself. There they are. So you mentioned just a minute ago that there were some wounded and you went out and you the soldiers under your command. How many soldiers are under your command? I know it's going to change. It's about about 30, but it never got to, you know, more like 25, you know, because people are always coming and going. So you mentioned but you, had, you had three. We had three uh, what's called? Uh, squads. OK. And that's how you move three squads. So in each squad had about 10 guys. That's approximate. So you 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 set the ambush, the ambush goes off, you have these these killed NVA, and but then some are wounded, and then you said, and then the wounded we kill. Yes. After you blew an ambush, and you realize almost all of these are at night, okay, like 85, 90% were at nighttime. Okay. Yeah. So you blow the ambush. If there's any wounded out there, whether they're the wounded or not, you just go out there and you kill them because you couldn't take them captive because you didn't know if they were alive or not. And you couldn't leave them there because they could throw a grenade at you. So you would just, the standard procedure was you blew the ambush and whatever was left over, including the ones who were dead, you, you fired into them and killed them if they weren't dead already. Was that sort of an unspoken policy no that was it that was the policy that was the policy yeah night ambush you went out and killed everyone you couldn't not do it because then you'd be putting your own self in at risk i want to go back to these 52 this this number 52 and the point of this question is not to 
Surprise. You're nothing is you're gonna I don't care what you ask. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the, the point is not to pry or to be ghoulish, but as you think of these 52, you see them, you know, you see them, there they are. Is there any particular of those 52? Is there any one particular memory that really sticks out in your yes. Are you willing to share that? Yeah, sure. So we came up with a number because one day we were sitting around counting. You know, we killed, that's how we got to 52. Okay. Because when you're doing it, you're not, you know, like keeping score. Okay. It's just that we one day went through all the ambushes and, all, you know, but the one that I remember was, and, you know, when you're blowing an ambush at night, someone's coming down the trail. You can't tell anything about them because you really you can't even see them. Even a starlight scope, you can't see them that well. Okay, they're kind of like fuzzy green. Uh, and I blew this one ambush, and it was it was really a fantastic ambush in terms of design. And this, and it turns out that they weren't, most of them were not soldiers. They were, uh, they were people who were forced labor. The NVA would take the villagers and have them build their, uh, you know, forts in the jungle. But normally they'd go home during the day. But for some reason, this group was going at night. You, know, you can't tell what they are. They come down the trail. It was a T. They walked towards me and I had the Claymore set up to blow across this way. But we faced them that way. So it was like an L. Uh, blew the ambush, go out with all the, the dead. And we we're killing a couple that, you know, didn't that were still alive. And I remember looking at this one woman. It was a woman. It was a grandma, okay? And her face was pushed all out of shape with her teeth. It looked very gruesome because she must have fallen. After she was dead, she must have fallen on something where the concussion basically rearranged her face. It looked kind of ghoulish. Uh, but then you could see it was, you know, she was just an old grandma. So a lot of the people that you killed, they weren't soldiers. You were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You can't tell at night. <laughs> You're not going to go out there and say, oh, by the way, you have an ID. Ain't going to happen. You're in a free fire zone. That's it. It's a free fire zone. You don't have to ask for permission. Someone comes down the trail, you blow them away. That's what we did. Um, did that event at that moment, did it stop you in your tracks? Or is that something that just stopped in your tracks later on as you looked back on it? Uh, it stopped maybe for 10 seconds because I had other things to do. You know, it's just that I saw it. It looks, it uh, always stuck in my mind. It still does. 